Okay, so I'm here with Jason Williams of True Test, and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about multi-species grazing and how to fence for that. So Jason, what are some of the considerations we need to think about when, when fencing? Sure. Some of the challenges we have is most of Saskatchewan's fencing is typically barbed wire fencing, and when people realize they have a need to graze other species with their cattle, uh, the fencing is just designed for typically beef cattle. So when we have to try and incorporate uh, small ruminants into the grazing scenarios, um, the first thing we want to do is try and keep the ruminants, the small ruminants, inside of the paddocks or the pastures. And we also want to keep predators out. And predation isn't a, a great concern for beef cattle, uh, but it is for sheep and goat producers. Um, what we were showing here today is is an example of how we can utilize an existing fence structure and still add in some electric uh, fencing products to help with um, containing those other species. Some of the troubles we're going to see when utilizing barbed wire with a smooth or a hot wire is if wildlife or another animal pushes the fence together we can see um, an issue where you would have your power fence come and touch uh, in contact with your barbed wire and that's going to reduce the power of, of the whole fence structure and reduce the effectivity of the fence itself. Um, goats are probably the hardest animal to fence for. We're typically going to see seven to nine strands of, of wire. I would like to see them all as in high tensile wire but that's not always possible. So then what we try and do is, is fit in uh, a hot component to the barbed wire itself. Um, there's a variety of different products on the market and when people are shopping for them we just want to make sure that they choose a product uh, typically that's of high quality plastic. We want a long uh, 10 or 15 year guarantee on our insulators and that will ensure that they've got enough UV stability to last uh, the duration usually of the fence itself because it, it takes as much work to put up a poor product as a good one so you it's better it's money better spent if you utilize uh, better insulators if you have a scenario where you might want to keep your hot wire or the powered wire well away from a barbed wire structure there's two items that we can use um, to hold the wire off of the other fence and one of them is called a weave-in standoff and basically it just weaves in to the other fence structure and it holds the smooth wire about 11 inches off of the other fence. The other type of product to hold the hot wire off of an existing fence is just called a pigtail standoff. They come in a variety of lengths and they're just simply nailed into the post and uh, they, they do become permanent after that. The weave-in standoffs could be removed at a later date um, there's two ways to tighten the smooth wire. One of them is called an inline strainer and these are recommended to be put in the center of our wire because they tighten from two directions. And the second type of tightener is basically an end strainer that will just tighten off of one end and they're better for shorter stretches of, of uh, wire. Now depending on the animal we're trying to fence we're going to have to put different heights of, of our wire. A beef cattle typically will do a two strand fence and the, the top strand is usually about 34 inches and the bottom strand is about 20 inches off the ground. Um, sheep and goats are totally different. Um, if you have a lot of younger animals you'll need a strand you know four to five inches off the ground and then usually every four inches above that until you get to somewhere around 20 inches of height and then you can put larger spacing. Just because of the way the animals graze, their heads are down near the, the bottom of the fence. To maintain stock control for beef cattle, well, we recommend about 3,000 to 3,500 volts on our fence. Uh, sheep and goats, we like to see that number at around 4,500 or higher. Uh, the chargers that are available nowadays uh, can provide ample power through most growing conditions 
and sometimes if there's a tremendous uh, amount of grass up on the fence or if you go through heavy shrubs or brush uh, you may need a larger charger to push the power further down the fence line. If we do not have the fencer grounded well enough we will see too many volts trickle through to the ground side um, to the ground terminal and what we want to do is by adding more ground rods we will force more power across to the to the positive side. Um, the first thing I would I would do is invest in a product called a, a digital voltmeter and what this does is instead of just grabbing onto the wire and feeling if there's a pulse there, this will actually give you a reading uh, in kilovolts as per what is happening on the fence itself. Um, so if we turn this charger on, it's hooked up to our fence structure and I can depress the button and I'll get a reading on the fence. And right now it has 5400 volts on the fence so there's an effective fence um, built right there. If you notice your power is down around 1500 volts or even 2000 volts, um, some things to check would, would be for broken insulators. Some of the new voltmeters will actually tell you a direction of a problem so it makes it a little easier when you're trying to fault find on the fence. But once in a while we'll get uh, broken insulators or you'll get a piece of barbed wire uh, or a, a tree fall down onto the fence or there might just be an extreme grass load drawing power out and usually after about two weeks we'll actually burn off the grass underneath the lowest hot wire but depending on the growth of the season and what the growth rate is uh, it, it might just overpower what our charger can do so that might be a scenario where you would invest in a larger unit um, some people have mowed underneath, some people will spray it with Roundup. Um, but I would check the insulators first, check my grounds to make sure we have adequate grounds. And then if you're involved in another fence structure, you can actually see if there's a reading on the other wires, which shouldn't have power on them. And if there is, there's probably a leak somewhere and that will really pull out the power of our fence.